Hello third year historians and welcome to the final lesson in our Mafia topic. This looks at the fall of the Mafia and the Mafia today. We're looking to understand why the Mafia influence declined and what it's like today. A couple of learning intention success criteria points then. Um, one, you want to be able to explain the factors that contributed to the decline in the Mafia. So why did it start to decline when it was obviously doing so well for so long? The second one is that we want to be able to describe the influence the Mafia maybe still has today in 2020-2021. And finally, we're going to practice another National 5 skill question. So can you put the final heading for the topic, please, into your jotter and then continue the lesson from there. So as we've seen, life in the Mafia could be a lot of different things. You could easily end up in jail. Or worse, you could be killed by your own side or by others, but the money was very, very good and the lifestyle was even better. So being part of the Mafia was not only a way of support as it had originally started out, but by the later part of the Prohibition period and then on to the sort of 50s and 60s in the US, the Mafia lifestyle had become a way of living for a lot of these people and it just continued on as time went on. Definitely the most effective period for the Italian American Mafia was between the 1920s and the 1970s. They made hundreds of millions of dollars every year through their business investments, through their entrepreneurial side of things, because remember, not all of the business investments they would have done would have necessarily been criminal ones, but a lot of them were, or a lot of the criminal ones did found the ones that they did later on. So the question is, if they were doing so well up to that point, why did the Mafia begin to decline? What actually changed in America that resulted in this group starting to fall away rather than continue to grow stronger? Later in the lesson, the National Five skill we're going to practice is this explain question. So explaining the reasons why the Mafia's influence declined in America. So we're going to need to look at each of these reasons. What we're going to do is either as a mind map, as headings with information, as a grid, if you want to split a, like a double page into six areas, we're going to put down these headings and we're going to use the next couple of slides to fill in information about them um, to give us this information we can then use for our explain question. So you're going to need a heading for government crackdowns, a heading for better police intelligence, a heading for less corruption, one for Omerta broken, one for competition and the less discrimination of the Italians as well. So decide how you're going to set out your answers for this. Decide if it's going to be a grid of six boxes you're going to put headings in and fill in. Decide if it's a mind map or if it's just headings with bullet points. Use different colours for the different headings. Make it stand out in your notes a little bit. And then once you're ready and you're set up, start the video again from about 3 minutes and 30 seconds and fill in the detail. So the first heading we're looking at is government crackdowns. It was only in the late 1950s that the American government actually officially acknowledged the existence of the Italian American Mafia or the mob as it was sometimes referred to. In 1970 a law was passed which made it much easier to arrest the high up Mafia members and then between 1981 and 1992 because of this, over a thousand Mafia members and their associates were convicted and sent to prison as a result. Including, from all over America, so this is everywhere, 23 bosses, 13 underbosses and 43 of the capos, which were the captain groups. So we're looking for key points from this slide to put into our information. We might say something like late 1950s, American government acknowledge the Mafia, 1970, a law passed which made it easier to arrest high up Mafia members. And then between 
the date and we have the parts that they were convicted. So that would be your kind of key points for the government crackdown. Still on government crackdowns then. So in 1987, three bosses from the New York Five Families were sentenced to 100 years each in prison. And this included Anthony Fatoni Salerno, Anthony Tony Dux Calerho and Carmine Junior Pescario. And these men were pretty much definitely involved in quite a lot of organised crime around the areas as members of the main families. And it took about 20 minutes to read out all of the crimes that they were actually convicted of when they were on trial, including, and not limited to, loan sharking, racketeering and of course murder. So key fact here, we can say in 1987, three bosses from New York's five families were sentenced to 100 years each in prison. So definitely showing that the government was cracking down on these families who thought they were, they were well protected and too powerful to touch. There would have been four bosses convicted if the final one was actually still alive. He was the boss of the Gambino family, but unfortunately he had died before he could be convicted. You can see a picture from the media actually at his death there. Um, his, him and his underboss were murdered when they got out of their car at a steakhouse restaurant in December 1985. The murder had been ordered by one of the capos from Castellano's uh, organisation because he believed that he could actually run the family better. So this is an example of this kind of internal strife within the hierarchy that did sometimes happen. So our next heading is going to be better police intelligence. And we're thinking about what types of technology and development the police would have in the 80s and the period where the mafia starts to decline but they wouldn't have had during the point where, say for example, Luciano had started to develop his hold over power in New York. So things like bugging was actually one of the only ways that they could get information um, from any kind of mafia cars or property, anything that they could actually get hold of so they had firm evidence they could use to convict the mafia bosses. So this was really, really important. And this meant that when they could actually get the bugs into the cars, they could actually then start to learn about what this hierarchy actually meant and who were the people who were actually in charge and the ones who were just carrying out these kind of crimes. So it wasn't actually until the 1980s that this hierarchy and structure of the Mafia family and the commission that we've been learning about in this topic was actually understood by the police. So they didn't actually really understand how the Mafia worked, who was where, they had an idea, but they could never prove it. And there were so many different people and different kind of stories about things that they didn't know exactly how far their reach went or how much authority they actually had. So it was only by this sort of bugging that they were able to actually get this information. And it wasn't until the 1980s that the government and law enforcement understood the structure of the Mafia family in the Commission. So those two points that we've highlighted there under that heading. So our next heading is public figures stop taking bribes. Okay. At this point, as it kind of says, it became much harder for the Mafia to pay people to look the other way or help them to do their businesses. So things like judges and politicians and police officers were no longer accepting the bribes that they had been taking before. With the government clamping down on the Mafia, people didn't want to be associated with them and risk going to prison as well. There were obviously still exceptions though, and more and more people actually did do this. Um, for example, this picture here shows you two New York police officers who were actually involved in nine of the murders that the Mafia took responsibility for during the kind of late 80s and the early 90s. So for this one, 
we're just going to say became harder for the mafia to pay people to look the other way or help them do their business and we need to take our example and we'll just say as well people did not want to risk being associated with them, there were still exceptions. Okay, so pause the video, write these notes in under your heading and then move on to the next one. The code of silence, the omerta, the one that you brought forward as your main way of becoming a made man was ultimately broken. Now, the word on meta originated in Sicily, it was introduced to America, it was this basic code of silence about all the criminal activity, you were not supposed to talk about it, even if you were arrested and tried, you would go to prison rather than admit anything or speak about what was happening in the Mafia. You should never talk about the existence or the activities of the Mafia in general. So, we're just going to take a quick point from this and put these points together. So, Meta was a code of silence about criminal activity. The existence or activities of the Mafia. So this code of silence should never have been broken. So write this one down as one point and then we'll continue on the next slide. The very first one to break the code was in 1963, Joseph Valachi. He was the very first person to publicly admit that the Mafia existed. He did so to try and get a lesser sentence for murder, which he was on trial for. However, he died in prison. Okay, But he did start a kind of a legacy of other Mafia members breaking this code of silence in order to try and help themselves out of a sticky situation. Um, so we're just going to say his name was the first to break the code in 1963 to try and get a lesser sentence for murder. Started a legacy of Mafia members breaking Omreta. Other people that did it, you can say for example these ones here. They are the ones that were then used, the family underboss and, and things like that as well, um, to put people away from the five families. Despite confessing to 19 murders because he had given so much evidence to the government, he actually only ended up serving five years in jail. So Gabino's family's underboss Salvatore or Sammy the Bull, as you can see him there um, giving evidence, was able to get this deal in return for all of the information he could give on someone who was pretty much referred to as the Teflon Don. Now the reason for this is Teflon is a material that stains and, and water and substance like that don't stick to. It's an American thing. Or at least I think it's an American thing, but it do, they don't stick to. And he was referred to as the Teflon Don because they had a lot of evidence to say he was very involved in things, but none of the evidence that they produced in court ever stuck. So when this man came forward with all of this, I, this evidence and first eyewitness account, first hand accounts, it was the only way that the government agents knew that they'd be able to prosecute. So that's why they gave him such a good deal for all of his evidence and information. A New York police commissioner said quite nicely about the whole Omreta being broken thing. Essentially, the mob has become a cage full of canaries. It just is a matter of finding the right canary to sing the right tune. So basically, they will tell on each other if the pressure is right on the right one. OK, another heading here, competition from other groups. So it was claimed that the Mafia were having to fight off competition from new groups, especially in New York. Um, and that made it really difficult. 
So, for example, Albanians and Russians, um, Chinese gangs, people that had come in and set up kind of new criminal organisations, Irish gangs and things as well, started to take away crime from the Mafia. So it meant that they had to actually become involved in other things. So this is a really good example that we can kind of just use these points in our note here. Italians being less discriminated against. Um, obviously, today Italians don't face the same prejudices that they used to in America. They've got the same opportunities as everybody else does. Because of this, Mafia membership in America falls as the Italian-American neighbourhoods become more demographically shifted and they become assimilated into society. So there was more and more people moving in that weren't Italian. It changed the kind of way that they were all grouped together and they became more part of the kind of mass society rather than just their own little group. Therefore, the Mafia can't recruit new members when the way they used to, but also there's not quite as much need for the kind of protection and the Mafia's main stronghold over the people seem to then be broken. So we can say Italians don't face the same prejudices, they have the same opportunities as everyone else. There's one point for this one. Mafia membership fell as Italian American neighbourhoods underwent demographic shifts. Sorry, we need all of this one, it's quite a big one, this one. And others assimilated in society. The Mafia not able to recruit new members. And those are our three points for the discrimination heading. So now that we've kind of got this information that we know about the reasons why the Mafia influence declined, we need to put this into a structure. And at National 5, one of the main structures that we use and one of the slightly more challenging structures is the explain question. Just a wee reminder, when we do explain questions, we are using the mnemonic A for answer, B for the word because, and then C for a comment of some sort. So if the question's asking us, explain the reasons why the Mafia's influence declined in America for six marks, we need to give six kind of ABC points. So we might say, for example, the breaking of the oath of silence, so that's my answer, was a reason why the Mafia's influence declined in America, because, and then I'm going to comment on that using one of the points I've now put into my table. So I might say something like, because it meant that evidence could be produced to convict the bosses more easily. And then I put a full stop. Lack of discrimination was a reason why the Mafia's influence declined in America because Mafia membership declined and they couldn't replace the members because people had equal opportunities. So I'm going to pick my kind of six things. You've got six boxes, which means you need to have one sentence for each cent for each box, for each heading. You're going to tell me what the heading is first then copy the sentence to say it was a reason why the Mafia's influence declined in America. Write the word because, and then I want you just to pick one bullet point from your grid or your mark or whatever you've put it in, and then use that as your comment. So finish this explain question and upload it to the team as your assignment. So kind of final question, are the Mafia finished today? This news report, which you can find in the team um, and you can watch it, we would normally have watched it in class, but obviously because this is a recording, you can't watch the video in it, but you can click it and watch it from the playlist. This news report was made the day after the killing of the Gambino family boss in 2019. So even though 
organised crime is not as well documented and it's not as well known, the mafia itself, and again not quite as powerful, is still in existence and these families are still there. Since 1931, Since 1931 five families of New York's Italian-American mafia, the names are familiar, Bonanno, Colombo, Gambino, Genovese, and Lucchese. But times have changed, especially since the days of John Gotti, who liked to bask in the limelight. Is the mob as powerful? Could another mob war be brewing? News for Chief Investigator Morgan John Steve joins us now with the state of the mob. Mayor Chalkin, last night's mob had its too soon to know if it's an internal struggle for power inside the Gambino crime family or some other personal or business dispute. But what the FBI says, while the mob has been taking a low profile in recent years, the five families are still very much in business. If this hit was a mafia power play, the FBI and NYPD have a message about the bloodshed last night on a Staten Island street. I think they've learned that the attention um, is not good for business. The Joint Organized Crime Task Force now deploy dozens of agents and officers to this case. The task force has been busy in recent years dealing with organized crime suspects. While taking a lower profile, investigators say they've certainly not gone away, changing some of their alleged rackets with the times. They still conduct the same bread and butter money-making activities that they always have, such as the illegal gambling, which turns into loan sharking, which turns into extortion. A leader in the Gambino family, Frank Kelly, kept a low profile. A far cry from the late John Gotti, the flesh she can be no crime boss of the 80s and 90s who took over after the sensational 1985 gangland shooting of Paul Castellano outside Sparks Steakhouse. But Gotti's high profile brought unwanted attention, as did the crazy act of past Genovese crime boss Vincent Chinjaganti, who wandered the streets in a bathrobe to try to avoid arrest. But in mob case after case after case... I'm going to bless this That's number one. And number two, whatever he's got jewelry, I'm taking it. Informants and recording show the crime families continue to bustle in and make money from fraud to union ripoffs to no show jobs. Uh, there's going to be a guy that's going to be needed there. I count the trucks, sit in the trailer, sit in the trailer, do nothing. Arrests making That's some difference. That's a disruption of their activities, but it's certainly not a dismantlement of the overall family. Now, with this apparent hit, investigators looking to see why there is a recent uptick in mob-related violence. Even the mayor seems somewhat surprised. We thought those days were over. I guess old habits die hard. The five families, somewhat weaker, but law enforcement officials describe their organized crime strategies as kind of like mowing along. You have to keep at it. So as you can see, the Mafia is still very much alive and well today in the United States. So the question then, are the Mafia finished? The answer is no. They're still doing many of the classic crimes that they always have. They're making millions of dollars a year through these activities. It is just a lot quieter than they were doing so before. The murders and being flashy bring too much unwanted attention, at least according to some of the more recent Mafia informants explaining how the Mafia operates now in a modern society. Also events like 9-11 and the focus on terrorism and other events in the US have helped take attention away from them and towards other places. Quote from a Mafia member and a member of the United States Police Force says similar things. The Mafia is part of the fabric of New York's and America's history. They will always find ways to operate. They're never going to go away. So that's our Mafia topic finished. Make sure you do that explain question from this lesson and we will do a revision lesson before we do an end of topic assignment of some sort and then we'll move on to our next topic. Any questions or if you need a hand with the explain question, don't hesitate to put a message up on the team or email your teacher and ask for help.